Welcome. We are excited that you're here, even in this new format, in about a year and a half of responding to COVID. We've done just about anything. Actually, this takes me back to the early time when I had to preach in front of an empty church, but I know you're all out there, and we are very excited about what's happening, for most of you, what's happening throughout this year for you and your children. Um, you will be helping them prepare for the Sacrament of Reconciliation to re receive soon, and then in the spring for First Holy Communion. And I'll have a chance to talk to them before both of those sacraments, but one thing I'll tell them is that Miss Janelle and I are praying for them every day. There's, there's a, a lot of people I have to lift up in prayer, but I, I, I'll tell them I still remember, even though it's over 50 years ago now, uh, my first reconciliation, my first Holy Communion, um, and it was a beautiful experience. I think Mass was still back in Latin back then, as a matter of fact, but we'll leave that in the past, too. So, some thoughts uh, on what I think is important. 31 years as a priest, I've heard a lot of kids' confessions, and what do I think is important that you, as parents, know? More than anything, it's that you make such a difference, excuse me, <laughs> you make such a difference in helping your children prepare. There's all kinds of lessons, and we've sent stuff home with you, but just the fact that you do that together with them makes such a difference. And I, I know because of COVID, a lot of families have maybe gotten out of the habit of really regularly coming to church, or we've kind of gone back and forth on how often we come and maybe we'll watch online. This is a great time to start, for the sake of your children and for your own sake, start coming to church, bringing them to church regularly, coming as a family, celebrating together. And I hope on the day of their first reconciliation that you'll be ready to come and confess your sins to everyone in your family, if everyone who's old enough. So, some of the things I thought it's important for you to know about. When you prepare, and some of you, maybe this is your second or third or fourth child who's received this sacrament, always reflect on how will this child experience this. We can tell you what the church teaches and what we've seen, uh, but it's a little different for every child. Um, the church says, generally speaking, every seven-year-old is ready, but every seven-year-old is different. The little bit I know about children, I see such a wide difference between um, some who are just old enough to understand and, and some that really have it down. Um, basics here involved are, do I know the difference between making a choice or doing something accidentally? And you know how it is with your children. They're getting old enough now that they'll use that excuse sometimes. Well, it was an accident, but it wasn't an accident. But being ready for confession is being ready to say, I knew it was wrong. I chose to do it. And I'm sorry. And you know as parents, or you know <laughs> as, a, as an adult, as a, mem a member of the church yourself, that's hard to do. That's hard for us adults to do. To go to someone we love and say, I knew it was wrong, but I still chose to do it, and I'm sorry. And how freeing it is when we do that. Now, sometimes I, I like to bring up somewhere in this year too, between First Reconciliation, First Holy Communion, that the church uses age seven because traditionally that's thought to be the age of reason. Um, old enough to distinguish between right and wrong, to deliberately make a choice. And um, how we chose that uh, way back in time, I'm not sure. But I think you can see that your child is more and more at the point where that, that is true. And we have a lot of parents every year who are worried. Is my child old enough? I'll just say, I have never had a child that I couldn't walk through their preparation for first reconciliation, a good confession of their sins. We can at least get something down. I tell them, among other things, I'm one of 12 brothers and sisters, so I can go through the list of sins I had back in those days. In any event, um, some, ba some other basics. Sometimes people get confused by all the names we have for this sacrament. Technically, the name is the sacrament of penance. And that's interesting because that's the very last step in the process. That is, when we come to confess our sins, first we have to be sorry. Then we confess, we admit it out loud. We ask for forgiveness. And then we have to do something to show that we are sorry. A penance 
as you, you'll learn in the materials, your child will learn, is penance is one way we show on the outside that we're sorry on the inside. It's some act, whether it be praying a few prayers or uh, doing some good things. Confession. We often refer to this as going to confession. Another very important part of this, a very important step. I admit, I acknowledge, I take responsibility. Powerful psychological thing to confess out loud. You know, I'll often talk about how I can remember times where I wasn't sure I was ready to confess something that it was, I found embarrassing, whatever it might be, and, and, and how it set me free when I no longer kept it in the dark but brought it out into the light. Let the light of Christ shine on it. It lost its power. There's, sin can have an incredible hold on us when we, we keep it in the dark and we make excuses and we have to tell further lies and so forth. Confession, letting it out, is such a healing thing by itself. And it, it requires contrition, as I said. It requires that you say you're sorry. But finally, we often like to refer to this now as the sacrament of reconciliation. That's the big term, if you will. That kind of encompasses, or captures the whole process, encompasses it at all. Sin separates us from God and from the people we love. Now, God will not separate himself from us, and most of the people we love will never give up on us. You know that. And you know you'd never give up on your children. But we, you know, when we sin, we choose to put that distance between ourselves and others. And celebrating this sacrament begins that process, sometimes completes that process, if we've already said sorry, to, we're sorry to those we love, of bringing us back closer to our God and to one another and making us one. Um, just a little bit of a brief history. Most of the sacraments in the church are something that have been roughly in the same form since the time of Jesus. Since uh, the Lord rose and the church began celebrating the Eucharist regularly and so forth, this sacrament has quite a different history. Remember, early on, most people came to the church as adults. And there was never thought that someone would at least seriously sin, that they would have to have those sins forgiven. And there's a lot of debate around third or fourth century about, well, can all sins after baptism, any sin, even the worst of sin, can it be forgiven? Is there any sin that isn't forgivable? Uh, and other than a, a little hard to understand passage in, in, in one place in the Bible, we won't go into those details, the church councils came down time after time saying, no, all sins can be forgiven. The problem was, how do we do that? There was, um, early on, kind of a very public process where if you committed a serious sin, you started out kind of exiled from the church and you couldn't even come into the church for a time. You had to do public penance. Then you'd work your way in. You could sit, like, sit in the back but not go to communion and finally you were restored to full communion. And at the same time, over centuries, um, people would seek out holy people, some, sometimes priests or women religious or male religious or... Um, sometimes lay people too, uh, to get advice, to get counsel. And we have records of, of penitential books that go back over oh, to the 6th, 7th century, I believe it is, where they would advise, just give you advice and, and, and uh, give you a penance, that type of thing. And it wasn't until the Council of Trent that they took a hard look at, well, what's really required here? And at that time they said, well, first of all, there has to be contrition. You have to be sorry. Then you have to confess out loud. It is necessary to get absolution, that is the prayer of forgiveness from the priest, that sacramental connection. And then there has to be a penance of some kind. Very vague on that requirement of what the penance is, but you have to do something, you have to show it in some way. All of those are required. A lot of people will come to me and say, well, why can't I just say I'm sorry to God as I've been doing in my own prayer? And there's something about the wonderful healing power of the sacrament. If you've got questions about that, I'd love to answer them another time. So, bottom line, what do I need to do to get my child ready to celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation? As I said in the beginning, come to church and come and celebrate the sacrament yourself. That makes such a difference. It's, it's time in their lives that they, they have that regular rhythm of prayer that includes Sunday Mass and, and from time to time coming to Reconciliation. 
Help your children learn their prayers. They're old enough. I hope they all know the Our Father, the Hail Mary, other basic prayers. And usually for first reconciliation, we might ask them, a priest would ask them to pray the Our Father, Hail Mary one or two times. Uh, usually I wait till they're a little older before I ask them to do nice things uh, instead of a prayer. Uh, but I've, 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 if I could tell you all the stories, I've heard powerful things. I've had parents come up to me and say, what did you ask my child to do? He's been wonderful for the last few days. Um, very important, start learning the act of contrition now. You can learn whatever version you want. Some people are quite insistent that they have, their child has to learn the version they learned as a child and the version their parents learned as a child. And whenever you come to confession here, we have little cards with the act of contrition on them. There is the current version, and the version I learned as a child is also on there. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry, and so on. And part of the reason I say, work with your through child on this, make sure they understand it, whatever version you want to choose. I've heard countless children say, oh my God, I'm hardly sorry, H-A-R-D-L-Y, um, or there's other words. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that... Uh, Sometimes bigger people who don't know that version of it will read it, older, older children or even adults, and they don't know the word detest that's in there too. So whatever prayer, make sure, I always say, like the Our Father and the Hail Mary, it should be a prayer that your child has written on their heart, that eventually they don't have to look at a card. It just comes out from deep inside of them, as, as, as it may from you. My God, I'm sorry for my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. That's the thing. I, one of the things I love about the current version is it, it stresses both we make wrong choices, but we also have those wonderful opportunities God puts before us to do something good, to do something right, and, and we fail there. Um, help your child to a point think about his or her sins. Very important. This is private. Uh, it's, it, it's between the child and Jesus, but there are beautiful examinations of conscience that are available in the materials you have. Uh, and I always say make sure the list is your child's list and not your list. I say that only with 30 plus years of experience. I hear children confessing sins that they don't really understand what they're confessing. Someone put that on their list for them, or I'm not really sure they get, they really understand what they're doing. Um, and related to that, this doesn't happen often, but never, ever, ever use this sacrament as a punishment. I've sometimes had people call and, you know, Johnny did such and such. He has to go to confession right now. And I'll say, no, when Johnny is ready or Susie's ready, then they can make that choice and come. But don't, don't make it as a, a punishment or a consequence for sin. You have to take care of that yourself as a parent. Um, again, as I said, it's so important just to be looking at, help your child look at, look together as a family, your relationship with God and, and examine your conscience. Uh, do I go to Mass regularly? Do I say my prayers daily? Relationships with others, with little children in second grade particularly. Uh, how do they get along with brothers and sisters, other children at school? Do they respect their parents, try to do what they say right away? Do they lie? Um, I, I, I can... Uh, usually find something for a child to confess pretty quickly if they freeze and they don't have something again because I had all those brothers and sisters. Um, very important that you help the child again to understand this is private. The priest can never ever tell anyone. I'll tell them this is the worst thing and one of the worst sins a priest could commit is to give any indication of what happened in, in a particular confession. So you can stress we won't tell we won't tell you, the parents. We won't tell teachers or anyone. It's between them and Jesus. Um, it's very helpful for children and adults to make a list, but then destroy it afterwards. I have a lot of adults who come to confession now. With There's an app for iPhones, and they have the list. Whatever helps, whatever is helpful is fine. Um, so how do we do it? It's in the materials, but it's the same in many ways as, as it was when I was a child. When they'll come in, and we'll have a number of you, you'll be coming in shifts, there'll be a number of priests here, but it's the same thing that happens any Tuesday afternoon or Saturday afternoon when I'm back in the confessional there. When they come in, when they're face-to-face -face with the priest, we always start with a prayer, the sign of the cross, 
And they say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first reconciliation, or it's been three months since my last reconciliation. These are my sins. Your child will tell the priests as best they can their sins. And I'm going to walk through all this with the children again, too. Uh, Important for you to tell them, as, as I will tell them, the priest may ask them questions, not because the priest is nosy, uh, but sometimes the children are a little confused and, and maybe we want to make sure they understand or we understand what, what's going on so we can maybe help them. So the priest will ask questions, maybe talk a little bit, and then he will assign them a penance, usually a few prayers, as I said. The child will pray the act contrition out loud and Again, we'll have cheat sheets available for that. And usually on the day of first reconciliation, Miss Janelle will have uh, something available for them that will have that. And then the priest will pray the prayer of absolution. And I always tell the parents ahead of time, some children, it just takes them a little while. At the very end, the priest prays that prayer of absolution and he makes the sign of the cross over them and they make the sign of the cross. I've had countless children over the years make the cross right back at me and so forth. So we'll get that all down in time. But I'm... I'm excited uh, that you are ready, uh, getting your child ready for this beautiful sacrament. I'm looking forward to First Holy Communion next spring. Um, We'll have lots of priests here. We'll have a wonderful celebration. And let's take a moment now to lift your children up in prayer as we begin this process. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and loving God, we thank you for the many things you do for our children every day. From that moment, you graced them with the gift of life and entered their lives in a wonderful way through the sacrament of baptism. Now in this year, open their little hearts that they may never fear to draw close to you, to express their sorrow for their sins, and be ready to receive in wonder and awe the gift of your body and blood in time. We ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Again, thank you for your time, for your attention. And Miss Janelle now has a number of other things that will help you and your children get ready for our first reconciliation. Well, thank you so much, Father Tom. You know, for not being a biological father, um, you impart much wisdom into the minds and the hearts of our little children of our seven-year-olds. So you have certainly earned the title of father in that respect. Um, I'm going to begin. I I was taking notes when father was talking, and I'm going to come back to a few things that he um, talked about. But first I thought it would be wise to go through the letter that most of you received way back in August that outlined what we do to prepare children for the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Um, As I said, this is no time to panic. Here at St. Michael's, um, and I guess personally for myself, we feel that not only your child is being prepared to receive the sacrament, but certainly um, you as well as parents or a grandparent that might be helping out. And that's really important that you, um, we hope you learn as much as your child in this process. Um, So that most important tool is you and how you feel about the sacrament. So kind of, you know, wrap your head around that if you haven't received recently or in a number of years, um, that's okay. We welcome you to receive First Reconciliation along with your child. Come, come back, and um, it's all good. So your own experience and your relationship with your child. St. Michael Faith Formation Program on Wednesday evenings, as well as the St. Michael School, use the same materials to prepare the children. The St. Michael School children Um, are able to use their textbooks in the classroom. I think they're starting, may have started this week, if not next week. And they are blessed to be able to have 15 to 20 minutes a day to um, share the material in the classroom. In faith formation, we only have um, less than an hour a week to um, share the same material. So 
with days off, we're under a little bit more pressure. And we're going to ask, uh, tap parents on the shoulders, in particular of faith formation, to help us complete some of the lessons at home so that um, you feel that your child is truly ready. Um, this is our plan of action that was on the letter that came out in August, um, presented by myself, Janelle, and Father Tom. And many of you may not know me. I am <laughs> Janelle Begeman, and I am the director of elementary faith formation. But for the sacraments of reconciliation and First Holy Communion, I um, kind of direct everyone in that, both the school and faith formation. We're all doing this as one family. So this will be posted to the web soon. I'll send out an email. Um, you'll, you will have received an email that it's um, ready to preview. And the next event that we have coming up is, it's called Church Chat with Father Tom. And it is on Wednesday, November 10th. And it's for second grade faith formation and school families. We're asking a parent to bring their child either from 5 to 6 here in the church or 6.30 to 7.30. And Father Tom is going to, again, be with us. So important that your child um, has a comfort level here in church. So important. And begins to become familiar with the church and certainly with Father Tom. I know he emphasized the importance of starting back to the masses and the celebrations here. Can't say that enough. So we have a parent and a child coming. Father Tom, again, is going to go through all the different steps on how to receive reconciliation that he talked about today. He'll also um, do an example or a model of how the children receive. So he'll have two chairs set up, and he'll go through um, how the child or you receives the sacrament of reconciliation. And he will also take the, give the children the opportunity, and you, to um, go inside and look and see what the reconciliation room looks like. So it's a great night to come together and be in, be in church, become familiar with the church. You can ask any questions. Your children can ask questions. Wonderful night to be together. That's for faith formation and school. Then in November... Again, the 20th and the 29th, and you can come to either one. Um, we have a workshop. It will happen in the Archangels Hall. Again, it's parent and child. And I usually have about four or five activities that we ask you to do with your child. One of them in particular is going through a very simple examination of conscience with him or her and try to get them thinking about um, what they might want to confess on, on First Reconciliation Day. We are inviting families to receive that sacrament on Friday evening, December 3rd, between the hours of 5 and 6.30. We'll have a sign-up genius available so that families can pick a slot, 5 to 5.30, 5.30 to 6, 6 to 6.30 to come. We'll have a number of priests throughout the church and everyone will have the opportunity to receive that sacrament, so individually go to a priest. One thing really important, and we're a little behind on this, um, are baptism certificates. We do need um, baptism certificates um, for your child, more so for First Holy Communion, because that's a sacrament of initiation. But also, we just like to get them now and have them. So as this letter says, um, if your child is not baptized or not baptized Catholic, see the contact information on that letter. And I'll resend this just to make sure you have it in your hands, um, because we want to take care of everything that you need help and support you to either make a profession of faith into the Catholic Church or to um, actually be baptized into the Catholic Church so that you're ready for First Communion. But we're taking care of that now. We have the ability to look in TADS registration and in our baptismal registry. So we have quite a few on file. I had thought we'd be connecting with parents by October 15th if we don't have one. 
but um, that's going to be carried out a little bit longer. We had a lot of registrations come in at the last minute, so we're just kind of waiting till we have them all. So again, though, if your child is not baptized or not baptized Catholic, we need to know as soon as possible, and that contact information is on this letter. So that's um, something you can look at at home, and I'll send that out again via an email. Father Tom, uh, and I think this is interesting, I actually prefer to call the sacrament the sacrament of penance, mainly because it's easier for children to say. I've heard children say the sacrament of reconciliation. You know, it's just, a, it's just kind of a big word for them to understand coming into second grade and saying, we're going to prepare for the sacrament of reconciliation. <laughs> but um, that is the term we are using. And in real simple terms, what I believe happens in the sacrament is that um, both you and your child are doing what your heart already knows. So that's a really simple way to talk to your child about what that sacrament is. Um, there is some assembly required in order to have your child ready to receive the sacrament. Father Tom listed uh, or talked again about what is a sin and how we know what is a sin and the difference between a sin and a mistake. And then there's about eight steps that we will be um, talking about in the classrooms, both faith formation and school, as well as um, we're going to be asking you to go through a lot of that at home. So um, we'll be, I send out emails to my faith formation families, and then I forward those to Mrs. Gillum and Mr. Olson, and they forward those on to our school families. So that's how we all stay connected and on the same page. The material that we use is a wonderful program that was adopted last year, um, somewhat pandemic related. It's called Blessed First Reconciliation. It's published through Dynamic Catholic, and it's a video-based program. And it is delightful and engaging. And I've never seen material that does as good of a job to explain the sacrament to young children and adults as this material. Again, as I've said before, um, the school children are able to, every, week, every day of every week, go through the material. In faith formation, we don't have that same amount of time. So in faith formation, I will be sending home some weekly homework for parents. So important for you to complete that at home so your child is ready when they come back the next Wednesday, but also, Parents of the St. Michael School children, um, you are not off the hook either. <laughs> We're going to make sure that you're watching those great videos with your child. And last year during the um, COVID, I actually recommended to our, all of the families that were doing home study to put away the core curriculum of religion that um, we use in first, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And if they have a second grader, just gather all the kiddos and family around the laptop, or if you want to um, watch it on the, you know, on TV, to watch these videos and go through the program because we've never had a program like this before, and I feel like um, the children that we've prepared in the past really, in some ways, missed so much because we didn't have this wonderful program. It's just a, a newly published program. One thing you can do that Father Tom kind of talked about is I think it's really important that every night you take some time to do an examination of conscience with your child. It probably best at bedtime, and you know, you could begin with prayer, but we'll be sending home these little exam cards, and they're so simple. We ask you to begin with the knowledge that we know God is with us, and then look at your day with God's eyes, not just my own. Give thanks for all that we have. Review my day. I think about my day from the beginning until now. I think about my choices. Did I sin? And I ask for God's forgiveness. And think of ways then that I can improve tomorrow. 
that is so key. I mean, certainly for the children, but again, adults as well, to prepare to receive the sacrament. Every day, just give some thoughtful time to how that day went. So this will be coming home with the children in both the school program and the faith formation program. Father talked about the prayers. I don't need to say much more. He was spot on with how we feel about the prayers, that we want them written on the child's heart and certainly um, clear in their mind. We do a wonderful job in both the school program and faith formation teaching what the prayers mean. We, however, cannot teach from memorization, for writing it on the heart. So all the Faith Formation families should have already received the um, prayer versions that we hand out just to give you something that's consistent for everyone, and what prayer should be learned at what grade. St. Michael's School Program has the same um, program in place. So know that in the school program, the teachers are working on those prayers as well and maybe sending home information to help you work at home. Um, last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about that program, Blessed First Reconciliation. The Faith Formation children received their books um, on October 13th. School children may have gotten them this week. If not, they're going to get them next week. And we are going to be encouraging, encouraging, encouraging um, parents to um, work, with that, work with the information again at home so that we're making sure that you're um, able to watch and do the same things that your children are and that they get everything out of this program that, that they can. So also coming via email, you'll be receiving a little tutorial on how to get into those online videos and enjoy them and use that at home. So that'll be coming home um, via email for both school and faith formation families to allow you to be able to go online. They have wonderful parent information. They have all the videos and that you can continue this at home. I think that is um, about it for right now. Um, and we can get ready to close. I just do want to say, though, the beauty of this program, I feel, is kind of the base um, teaching that they have. And what it is is um, we are trying to teach every child that they are blessed and wonderfully, marvelously made in God's image. And that God wants each person to become the best version of him or herself. So you will see that going through and through and through all the lessons. You are blessed. You are blessed in many ways. You are a child of God. This is the original blessing. The best gift you ever received is life. God loves you. You are blessed. You'll see that over and over again. So we ask you to continue that at home. Um, we hope that you have that same experience as you go through this material. Um, just feel all the graces and the goodness of God that is yours through um, your baptism and enjoy the process. Thanks for tuning in and have a, have a wonderful day.